Welcome back. In this tutorial, I'll be bringing you further in depth of each of the panners, mono, stereo, and quad. I'll do a demo to video with some more regular functions you may find in the post production world, and one quick demo after that with music elements in a more experimental session. The experimental session is mainly to show that there aren't limitations using this system. If you can dream it in audio, you can create it in the Mach 1 environment. One thing I haven't mentioned but you might have gathered is that the panner is a top-down view with the height control on the right side here. So here we have one of our main characters with some mono footstep foley. As you can see, the automation is already drawn in, but let's erase it and quickly redo with the overlay function. We open this window, like all plugins in Pro Tools, to select which parameters we want to automate. It's important to note that while you can automate all these functions, it has been handy in the past to only automate rotation and height and leave diverge alone. This will really help you fine tune your mix later on. So here we go. Drag the overlay to where your person is and drop automation markers. The key command that I'm using for this is shift option forward slash. You can also write automation in real time by recording automation and dragging the overlay around, but I'm always a little bit off when I do that. So these basic principles you can use across the rest of the panners. The stereo panner has some added functionality, like spread, which is self-explanatory, and quad has the ability to use ambisonic A or B format audio and pan it correctly within the session. All of these panners have the unique diverge control, which, as we said in the intro video, the amount of divergence represents how much sound is isolated in that desired direction and not anywhere else. At maximum 100% divergence, the signal is not audible in the opposite direction. As you lower the divergence, signal is more omnipresent in all directions. Now to explain the idea of ghosting, it's basically a simulation of the interaural time difference and ILD along with some creative and engineered EQ curves that help create a more in-depth 3D experience while allowing the engineer full control thus producing the ultimate sound experience at maximum directionality. It's important when using the ghosting technique that you keep diverge of all panning to maximum 100% hey, so that you get the most out of this doing? effect and no risk of phasing. Once you have your panning automation set, simply duplicate the channel or bus which you want to add a ghosting effect to and bring the diverge knob of the duplicate channel from 100 to negative 100. This will now perfectly invert your panning automation thus keeping the ghost sound source exactly 180 degrees opposite of your main non-ghosted channel. Once you have set up your ghost channel, now you want to use EQ and filtering to make it sound like the source is behind you. And just keep in mind that these settings aren't a rule, it's here to inspire you to create your own settings. We're constantly tweaking ours depending on the sounds, mixes, and desired effect. You also want to put a small amount of delay on that signal to simulate interaural time difference somewhere between 0.4 and 0.6 milliseconds. You also want to make sure that the ghost signal is about 3 to 6 dB less loud than the original, simulating the interaural level difference. Hey, what, what are, you are you doing? doing? They've activated security protocol. We don't do drills, move it. Hey, what are you doing? They've activated security protocol. We don't do drills, move it. Hey, what are you doing? They've activated security protocol. We don't do drills, move it. Hey, what are you doing? They've activated security protocol. We don't do drills, move it. So there we have the more straightforward approach. Now let's open a music session and see what we can do here. So here we have two stereo channels, which are close mics and a piano, and room mics. So we can place them where we want. Say the close mics are on the left, and the room is on the right. Now, that sounds pretty awesome. 
Let's add a mono synth pluck jumping over your head from side to side just for fun. Now, you can really do whatever you want with this. Add weird percussion, have different tracks on different sides of your environment. You could even compose two different pieces of music in the same key for each side, and as you look around they would mix in different ways. Uh, these are just some ideas and hopefully they spark creativity and show you that you can use these tools in whatever way you can think up. So that should cover the three panners and ghosting and give you the ability to jump in a session and start panning in Mach 1 Spatial.